Hi everyone, Kathy Rose here. I'm here to talk to you about the astrological patterns for January, 2023. So as we begin this forecast video, I want you to start please by focusing on this image of Capricorn on the screen because the sun is in Capricorn as we go into January and we're still being filled with this very potent practical energy that wants to achieve, wants to move things forward, um, is very strategic and is very grounded. And as we enter the new year and we welcome in the new patterns, we can do it with this kind of grounded, structured, ambitious energy. And this ambitious energy then leads me to the first thing I want to talk about, which is I, I just really want to impress upon you how potent the Jupiter and Aries transit is right now, because Jupiter is literally speeding through this dynamic fire sign. It is going to go all the way through the sign. And then in mid-May, it's going to enter Taurus, at which point the expansive energy changes dramatically because it, it moves into an earth sign. And the earth sign doesn't have the same kind of dynamic movement that Aries has. So the image that's on screen is a big, burning, bright bonfire. If you have ever stood next to a bonfire and you have felt the incredible heat, but the movement and the crackling flames and just the energy that it radiates, you know the potent power of fire. There's action, it's movement, nothing stands still during a bonfire. Well, this is the energy that is going to be bombarding us and it's going to help us move everything forward in our life if we want it. There is a lot of courage, a lot of um, initiative possible, um, but just action, 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 action. So this is when, if you jump in and you take a chance to expand and grow and um, start a new project, you're going to find a whole lot of support from the planets. And it's reinforced and echoed by something very special that happens in the beginning part of this year. There is a shift of gears and special acceleration taking place because all the planets are going to end their retrograde periods and be in direct motion for several months of this year. And that doesn't happen very often. And that combined with Jupiter moving so fast through Aries, it's just like being in a race car and finally the traffic opens up and you get a step on the gas and you just get a surge forward with power. So let me explain. January 12th, Mars ends the retrograde phase in Jupiter, I'm sorry, in Gemini. And Mars is the ruler of Aries. So Mars going into direct motion, it's like physical energy moves forward. Mars and Gemini is related to our thinking and our ideas also, but it's just pure physical energy. January 18th, Mercury ends the retrograde in Capricorn. So the three weeks prior when Mercury was retrograde and you were reassessing, rethinking, reorganizing and internalizing a lot of ideas, very productive period, I'm sure. When it goes direct, you get to release them and express them. You get to radiate them and move them all forward. Then January 22nd, Uranus ends the retrograde in Taurus and that releases all kinds of innovative energy innovative energy that's been bubbling around inside where you've been considering new levels of personal inner freedom, then it just gets expressed out into the world. So understand that as we go into the first part of 2023, we get this beautiful gift of having no friction, having no bumps in the road. Um, there is a beautiful acceleration of zooming, just like we are zooming right now in this presentation, but it's zooming forward. I'm pretty excited about it, and I hope you are too. 
Now, on a separate note, I want to share with you some Venus themes that are beginning that I think are quite significant. And these Venus themes have a lot to do with showing us where we may or may not have issues around power dynamics in relationships. We get to explore the concept of, are we able to hold our power when we are engaged in relationship energy in the world, whether that is romantic relationship or friendships or work relationships. In other words, Venus, which is the planet of social connections and connecting with people in general, but Venus is, can also be romantic connections. It's just connections on all levels. But Venus is also about values. And in this case, it's going to explore the concept of self-worth. Now, we express so much power or we value power in a capitalistic society. Many times we're taught to believe people who have more money have more power or are more powerful or valued or people who have a lot of degrees or three large houses or um, amazing um, luxury cars, you know, so there is so much power we give away in related to how much stuff other people have. Um, and we get to explore that and take power back. Are we able to hold our power? It begins on January 1st, as we have a conjunction between Venus and Pluto at 27 degrees Capricorn. Honestly, New Year's Day, declare, state it, state it with conviction that you are worth loving, that, that you deserve to be loved, that you have worth simply because you are breathing. Explore that whole concept. Explore what may or may not trigger you to give away your power or to defer to somebody else. And practice holding your power, holding your space no matter what. Because mid-month, January 15th, Venus is going to square Uranus. And that's going to be in the fixed signs, Venus at 14 Aquarius, squaring Uranus at 14 Taurus. And what this offers us is if you started the month really holding your power, appreciating your own self-worth and anchoring that, then when Venus squares Uranus, you get to feel the freedom that comes from not caring what other people think. And I don't mean that to an extreme, but I mean that you don't lose your center based on how you think other people are viewing you. You know, that ends up putting you in prison. If you only feel good about yourself, if you are getting certain kinds of feedback from others, you're in prison. And this Venus theme going on is trying to help you to be free and self-assured and filled with lovingness. And that continues on January 22nd as Venus makes the conjunction with Saturn, 24 degrees Aquarius. This is when you can integrate and digest and create the new habit of staying solid no matter what. Okay, but this goes even larger than that. It continues through the year, especially in mid-March. Venus is going to square Pluto. Pluto will be at 29 degree Capricorn, getting ready to enter the sign Aquarius. You have to remember, Pluto's just going to tiptoe into the beginning part of Aquarius for just a few months. Then it's going to retrograde back into what's called the anoretic degree. Anoretic degree means the very last degree of a sign, 29 degrees. And when a planet, especially Pluto, a big heavyweight planet, hits the anoretic degree, there is a very potent pressure to understand the dynamic of this signature energy. In this case, power dynamics in relationships. So it begins January 1st with Venus conjunct Pluto. It goes to the next level, March 16th, when Venus squares Pluto. 
And then we get it again on June 6th when Venus is going to be opposite Pluto. And again, Pluto will have retrograded back into Capricorn at 29 degrees. So you see, it's a larger theme that's happening here. And I can even mention to you the fact that January 15th, Venus square Uranus, then leads to April 1st when Venus is conjunct Uranus. And again, Venus Uranus contact is feeling the freedom, the self-assured freedom of what other people think about me does not matter. It is really important that I love myself and my self-assured energy is unshakable. Okay. So you see, we're going to have repeating themes, but it is so important in 2023 to contemplate power dynamics and relationships and take it back. Don't give away your power anymore. All right. So now let's go back earlier in the month to January 6th. And let's just explore the full moon in cancer for a moment. On the right side of the screen, obviously, is the chart. On the left side of the screen is this beautiful, glorious image. Um, this is an original painting my friend Liza created. Liza and I have done a lot of art together through the years. This one she did completely on her own. The reason I chose this image is it because it, it very much symbolizes what this full moon in Cancer is all about, which is about learning that you are supported, you are loved. There is comfort all around you if you can be open to receiving it. But it's more than that. The image itself is a mermaid reaching out to an angel and the angel reaching out to the mermaid and they're sharing love. They're sharing support. It's as if the angel says, I'm here for you. You are loved and supported constantly. And so at this full moon in cancer, step outside and let the full moon shine on you. If you can, if, if you don't have any clouds, let it fill you with this universal support that is always, always there for you. You know, I, I work a lot with angels. I think angels are in a separate kingdom from man. I think they're connected with a nature kingdom, that they are the most evolved beings in the nature kingdom, and that they are filled and connected with pure creative energy. It is angels I go to when I need to manifest, when I need help, when I need love, when I need support. Because angels' job is to fill us with love and creativity. And every act of manifestation is really an act of love because your heart just fills so powerfully with the love and support offered from the universe. So that's what this full moon is about. One more thing. You're going to see on the um, chart image here that the sun and Mercury are conjunct during this full moon. Um, there, it's actually going to be exactly conjunct the next day, January 7th, because Mercury's in retrograde motion. It is retrograding back to make the conjunction with the sun. However, it's going to be very strong January 5th, 6th, 7th, and maybe a little bit even into the 8th, where we have sun and Mercury working very close together. And during these periods, and they happen more than once per year, but anytime we have a Sun-Mercury conjunction, we get the opportunity to clarify our thinking. This is when there is crystal clarity and power behind our beliefs and our thinking. And we get to reset. So at this time, January 6th, full moon period, the thing I would focus on is increasing your belief about being supported, being loved, um, releasing any belief that may be related to feeling abandoned or alone and open up to the fact that indeed you are loved, indeed you are supported and use this sun mercury energy to enhance that. Okay, then January 21st, we're going to have a new moon in Aquarius. Look at the image on screen. You see it's very different energy than Capricorn, without a doubt, right? 
I'm not going to do a deep exploration of the new moon in Aquarius right now. I'm going to do a separate video on that. It'll come out mid-month. Let me just say this. This new moon is at one degree of Aquarius, so the sun will have entered just the day before. Really, what this is going to do is give us a little preview of the Pluto transit entering Aquarius in late March. So how you feel and what you program at the new moon on January 21st may get echoed and reinforced and flow out into the world when Pluto enters Aquarius. So be very, very clear about that new moon on January 21st, about your own unique personal signature and how much worth you have, how much value you have, and how you deserve to be loved and supported. It's a potent period. Now, final thoughts, final thoughts for this video. I have a very special client who is in the public eye quite a bit, and she has a beautiful sense of confidence and sense of self. She is unshaken by other people's opinion of her or her work. And she very thoughtfully at one point mentioned to me this quote from Georgia O'Keeffe. And she said, I have already settled it for myself. So flattery and criticism go down the same drain and I am quite free. I cannot, I, I just have such appreciation for how that summarizes everything going on in January with these Venus themes, you know, connecting with Pluto, connecting with Uranus, connecting with Saturn, and Jupiter speeding through Aries and all the planets in direct motion. Settle it for yourself. Flattery and criticism go down the same drain. You are free. You love yourself so much. You are so self-supportive that none of that other stuff matters. And that's really January in a nutshell. So I'm wishing you a very, very happy new year with many blessings and much love. And I look forward to seeing you mid-month at the new moon. Bye for now.